This STC took me on quite an adventure. Along with its sister radio, um, which is identical, but has a brown cabinet. This one has a cream cabinet, I think, or the other way around. I've mixed up the chassis, so I don't quite know. Uh, it's, well, yeah, particularly nasty radio to fix. Um, one of the main resistors was well and truly overheating. Um, there was no sound coming out of either of them. Uh, one of the output transformers has died. Both of the speakers, we have to watch the video to actually see how bad they are. But this one is working to, well, 90%, let's say that. It's humming like anything, and um, I'm not quite sure why. If you touch the radio, uh, the hum goes away. So, and it's not an earthing problem because I've put a three wire mains plug on it and it is earthed now. Anyway, let's get into the video and I did lose some of the footage towards the end. I'll actually be able to reproduce that next week with the other radio or in a couple of weeks time when the valves arrive and I managed to find another output transformer that works. But here we go. Okay, this is the first one. And yeah, quite a nice little radio. Doesn't have the uh, broadcast tower down there. This one might be a slightly later one or something like that. Uh, it's pretty filthy inside as usual. So let's put on a bit of power on it and we'll just see if it works. Again, this was sold as working. But I doubt it's been used for many, many years. This is very tight and very hard. Yeah, okay. So we'll just put a little bit of power on it. Let's sit there. Oh, well, that'll do. You can see it. Now, of course, my arm is going to be in the way as usual. So I've just got a little bit of power on it. Just want to see if we get any light out of it whether it's just a plain write-off. Now we do have dial lamp right down the very back there. I don't think you can see that. Mm, just a little bit. There it is. And we've got the other one. Yeah, we've got two dial lamps, so our six volt is working. And we'll just wait a few moments for the Passages to come back to life and we'll bring it up so I've waited about uh, two minutes or something like that and we'll bring it up at about 150 see if we get any valves glowing no heat in the rectifier yet Still stone cold. Okay, we're up to 220. Uh, no, sorry, 200. Yeah, a little bit of warmth in there. We'll put an aerial on it. No glow from the dim bulb. Okay, 2.20. And there's nothing at all. There's no harm or anything like that. 
Our rectifier is warm, but it's not hot. Okay, let's turn it off, take it out of its cabinet, and we'll see which components need replacing. Right, I don't know whether you'll better see this or not. Down here, we've got a grub screw in this knob and it has been uh, stripped and I'm not sure how to get this out might have to drill it it's been yeah well and truly stripped out I mean the head on it has been stripped out not the actual thread and when I was just doing this a little bit I don't know whether you better see that yep so these the dial glass has actually cracked up there I think it was cracked I'm pretty sure it was cracked down here first um, yeah and I just went like that with and um, tried to get the screwdriver in there and yeah just continued up unfortunately uh, yeah so that's not good so what I'll do is I might spray some of that horrible stuff down it and we'll see if we can get this to loosen off a bit and we'll put some more down here right just soak this felt with this horrible oily stuff right let's try drilling this out very careful with this wouldn't have worried so much if it wasn't mine oh I wouldn't have worried so much if it was mine no it's just going over to the plastic I get it get it in okay I'm going to have to do this off camera I think it's going to take quite a bit of work right so the drill has not gone in where it's supposed to go which is into the screw it keeps on bouncing off and into the plastic but I have drilled right down into the shaft so we'll just try this No, this doesn't feel very good. No, I think it has moved a little bit. So I can get the spoons in here quite easily. The first time. Just then I couldn't get that in. No, I can hear the glass going again. Okay, back onto the drill. As you can see, I've drilled it right out. And yeah, it's still not shifting. I'm right down to the shaft so I can see the different colored metal must be really rusted on so we'll just try the spoons again and very gently this is well and truly jammed on this horrible stuff again and I'll just let it sit and bake in its own juices I guess I 
I'll go and do some things and clean all these metal filings up. Yeah, it's definitely a different colour. So that is the shaft on the top, and then below it, that greyer stuff is more the um, the screw itself. So I'm well and truly right down to the um, into the shaft. So the only thing I can really do is just wait for that gunk to penetrate. This is the other one. And let's move those. Um, this one already has a crack down there. So there seems to be a bit of a problem with these. My other one with the transmitting tower on it is in perfect condition. Um, this one looks a little bit cleaner inside. It's got, this looks like a, a new, in inverted commas, power cord. Although this was done decades ago. This is as stiff as a brick. And it's actually painted. But it's got the original plug on it. Um, yeah, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just bring this up again on the variac. Sorry about the arm. I believe these were not very expensive. $25 or $30 or something like that. Now, okay, that grub screw looks all right. And that one looks all right. So... Hopefully we won't have the same problem. Although if they're really, really rusted to the shafts, which is what the other one is. And we'll have a look for dial lamps. It's at a really low level. And the dial lamps have been taken out. Well, that's useful. Um... So I can't get any at the moment. They're on order with J car. I went down to do to the Geelong J car last week and it was all boarded up because there'd been a big fire in there. So I've no idea when they're opening and there's no globes up here which they can get. So we're stuck for these little globes at the moment. I do have a box of globes which I bought from Carl many years ago, but I can't find it. And while they're the round type, not the tube type, they will fit in these radios. We don't have any of the glow. Oh, yep. Rectifier is beginning to glow. We're on about 130, 140. Two hundred. No hum or anything. Just out of pure curiosity, I'll put the aerial on it and no noise whatsoever. Okay, now we'll try and undo these grub screws. Yep, and this one's come straight off. And 
Yep. And this one's come straight off. So that's good. So you can see in there. So it's not too bad. I've seen far worse. And it's really just dust. Uh, it's really just dirt more than dust. I really can't stand the dust, household dust. I mean, you don't know what uh, you'll get in there. Okay. So this one is the aerial, the black one. And this one is the earth, the white one. Ooh, okay. So this is very original. Oh, no, it's not. Got a little excited then. Right, so we have an original paper cap um, electrolytic there. Big one. Um, and that is a 24 microfarad. This one has been replaced. And again, it's a 24. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six paper caps. And the uh, resistors are an unknown quantity. I mean, this is a bit dodgy. And it's got a big knot in it there, which is a big no-no these days. A couple of resistors up there. Yeah, this looks all right. So, and looks fairly straightforward and easy. Um, yeah, the glass is definitely cracked right up there. Got a an older style roller 5C in there. Uh, now Apple Transformers on the other side. So I'll start on it. I'll replace these two caps first. Um, given that it was silent, I really suspect the output transformer has gone. And is this going to be easy to get out? Yeah. This looks reasonably straightforward. We just have the two screws there and a bit of a bolt there. I'll be back in a moment. This is the output tube. So 6BW6. Um, we'll just check this first and see if we get anything out of it. Yeah, it's weak. Pretty weak. And, yeah. Might go just go and check the other one. But that should produce a bit of a noise. Right, this is the other one. A few seconds to warm up. Mm, this one looks good. Yep. Yeah, so that this one's good. So I might, given we've got this one out of the chassis at the moment, and we can work on it, I'll just replace this one. I'll order some valves in a minute. I've pulled the speaker up a bit and we'll just test the continuity on the speaker itself okay so the coil is not open on that one and we'll have to put this back I think but we'll leave that there for a moment and see if we can test the continuity on the it has had a new transformer put in it so I can see by the heat shrink or 
yeah, is heat shrink. Um, over it, again, a very long time ago. So we'll just test the... Okay, so we don't have a output transformer. Radio. I'll have to see about something for that because I have run out of output transformers without rewinding them. Radio. I shall leave this for a moment and I'll be back. Well, this wasn't going to give up without a big fight and I went to this size then the next size and then I really had to get tough with it and uh, yeah that's a five mil drill bit on there and yeah really didn't want to give up unfortunately I've um, mashed up the knob it should look something like that i think that's a bit of a write-off but i think these are fairly common in to find easy to find so yeah but yeah i just couldn't get off and you can see how much i've drilled into the actual um shaft there so it's a real pity having to do that i hate doing things like that but needs must i mean it sat for what six hours with the wd-40 on it not going to give up easily so i'll clean up this little bit of a mess and then we'll take it out the chassis let's take it out of its case this should be quite easy. Yeah. yeah. This one is a bit filthier. Oh, and the speaker. Yeah. So this one is really pretty filthy. Uh, interesting that it's painted silver inside. Obviously done at the factory. Maybe you'd uh, do something with the heat or maybe an undercoat or something like that and our speaker is totally yeah it's missing its cover so as you can see it is pretty grotty really grotty it's not showing up on the camera as much as in real life but it's really bad so i'll see if i can vacuum that out a bit um, and also around here you can see all the filth down there and on the transformer yeah I just wonder this one works at all um, yeah okay so we'll be back in a moment so the cone itself is in pretty good condition it's a bit weak across there And yeah, it still needs cleaning out down the bottom there, but listen to it. So it's going to need some surgery. Get that bit out. Um, yeah, it's cleaned up pretty well actually for first going over with the vacuum cleaner. So I'll plug this one back in again and we'll just do some tests on it. And we'll see how we go. Now with this one um, at 200 volts, I can hear a very, very slight hum from the speaker. It's obviously not going to work all that well with that grime in there our rectifier is not getting hot 
So the first thing I'll do is I'll have a look for another rectifier and we'll change that. I'll put in another 6x5 in it. So, and this one is actually lighting up a bit better. And it's getting quite warm, although it's not as warm as it should be. They should be red hot. So obviously the filter caps have had it. So I'll just have some dinner. And given I started this at seven o'clock this morning, it's taken me quite a long time to get this far. Okay, so I'll have some dinner and I'll be back. Now this one looks very original underneath. This is an original cap. These Technico ones look actually quite nice. They're actually, yeah, quite clean and not cracked at all, which they normally are. Uh, we've still got the, a few paper caps. These are, of course, paper caps. So let's replace this one. And with our can, yep, we've got one there. So that's easy to replace. Uh, yep, it just goes straight to ground, positive out, yep. And uh, yeah, so this one is looking quite a bit better. I've changed the two electrolytics and I've also changed this point uh, to two, which was originally a 0.25, so close enough. Now let's see if it'll fire up. No glow from the dim bulb. No noise from it either. Okay, let's turn it up a bit more. And I'll check something smelling. Might be just dust burning off. Yeah, okay. Mm, yeah, it must have been just dust. Mm, let's go up a bit further. So we've got about two, okay. Something is burning down here. Now it came from down here. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Can't, there's nothing really to burn down there. Something was definitely burning down there. And it wasn't the transformer, which is over here. It was definitely coming from down there. Right. Let me just pause. You're probably having a look at the back of my head as usual. So let's just pause it and I'll put some clip leads on it and we'll see what the voltages are doing. Hopefully you can see that looks good on my screen here. And we've got some residual voltage in the system. It's going to take ages to go right down. So let's turn it on and we'll bring it up slowly this time. So that's 80 volts. And hopefully the rectifier will start conducting. Okay, it stopped. Now it's going back up. Here it comes. Remember the Variac is only on 80 volts. Okay, we'll go up to 120. Very slow. Okay, we'll go up to halfway. 
That's a bit quicker. So around about 150, I think. And I'll bring it up to 200. And we'll start watching for smoke. Yeah, that looks rather low, actually. 171. Yeah, about 171, 170 at 200 volts. Bring it up a little bit further. I can smell the smoke again. One eighty six. It doesn't look high enough to me. Yep, it's smoking again. And where is it coming from? Is it coming from that capacitor? Definitely something smoking down there. Can't quite see where it's coming from. I think it's that capacitor. Okay. Right, we're off again. Unplug it for safety. This is beginning to deform. And it's red hot. Okay, so we've got a dead short in that capacitor. Just bring you over to the other camera. So we've got a dead short in this capacitor here. So this is why you have to be very, very careful and test everything on these, um, especially these paper caps and the electrolytics. Okay, I'm hoping you can see both of those meters. So I'll bring the variac down again. Now, the yellow fluke meter is on the main filter cap and the other one is across the cap which I've just replaced, the 0 0.01. So, right, we'll bring this up a bit. Now the old cap didn't seem to be shorted at all. There we go. But it could have been shorted to ground. So it was a bit of a mess underneath it. So we've got one, 1 1.5 volts across that coupling cap. Going up to two volts and we're on 150 volts. So I'll bring this up a bit further. We're on about 200 volts. And can't hear anything yet. I can't smell anything or see any smoke. I'm bringing this up a bit further to 20. Seven volts, okay. And 
185. I'm really going to have to search out the schematic for this. I cannot find it except on Radio Museum and it doesn't have the same valve lineup. And there's no model numbers stamped on the chassis or anything like that on these. Right, we're not smoking. I can smell something. Yeah, okay. There goes the smoke again. Okay. Now that is very odd because it seems to be wired up the same way as the other two. I know mine works. So, and there's no, there wasn't that much voltage going through it. And it's a 630 volt cap. It's definitely not shorted out on anything. So this is a bit of a mystery, this one. I might try another rectifier and see if that solves it. Because it wasn't smoking before, so it was, yeah, doing anything like that before.